Er zijn een paar mensen die al alle gesprekken hebben gevolgd, denk ik. Hè? Ja. Proficiat. Um, en ik ga nu praten met Nino Haratishwili. Haratishwili. Uh, of Haratishwili. Maakt allemaal niet uit, want het accent. Uh, er is eigenlijk geen accent in de Georgische taal. Um, en that's where you're from. You're from Georgia. Hè? Dus niet Georgia, de staat in Amerika, maar het land, Georgië, klinkt ook in het Engels Georgia. Uh, and, but you live in Germany now, in Hamburg, and you're a writer, of course. Uh, that's why you're here, too. Eh? Or why, maybe otherwise you would be here, too. There's no telling. Uh, so we won't go into that uh, road. And you brought a text with you from Marina Tsvetaj... Tsvetaeva, do I pr pronounce that right? Tsvetaeva. Tsvetaeva, yes. yeah. So, but because you're, you're, you, you speak, of course, Georgian, Russian, German, and English, yeah. And but you're going to read it first in English for us. Yes, I try my best because I've. It's just like for, I, I, I read it it two seconds ago for the first time in English because I know this poem in in the in, in Russian. Russian, yes. Yeah. Okay. And, and you can read it too. You can also in in book you lesen, naturally. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And so many have fallen into this abyss, gaping for a way. A day will come when I will vanish too from the face of the earth. Everything will freeze. All that sank and fought, shone and longed. The green of my eyes, my gentle voice, the gold of my hair, and the life will remain with its daily bread, with its daily oblivion. Everything will remain as if under the sky I never existed. I ever changing like kids in every mean and angry not for long, who loved the hour when logs in the fireplace turn into ash. A cello riders in the thicket and church bell in the village. I so alive and real on this loving earth to all of you for whom I who knew measure in nothing Am I a friend or a stranger? I turn with a demand for face and a request for love, both day and night, in word and letter, for truth of yes and no, for I'm too sad too often at merely twenty years, for inevitably must forgive offenses for all my underbuilded affection and my too proud looks, for swiftness of events on rushing, for truth and for the game, please listen. Love me also for one day I will die. Thank you, that, that went well, eh? reading it in English. <coughs> but you will read it in, in Russian eh? the, at the end of the talk, too. Uh, whatever, you could read it in any language. <laughs> eh? uh, yes, I wanted, to, I wanted to bring the German translation because it would be also comfortable, more comfortable for me, but I, I, I could not find it in my books. I only had this in Russian, so yeah. yeah. Okay, Nino, what, what does it say? This text. What? I I love Marina Zvetaeva. She was she had a great impact on me and my writing. I discovered her in uh, my early ages, and um, I have great respect of her poems, of her writing, of her talent. And she was a quite tragic person with a really tragic bi biography, and. Um, Still, she has um, an impressive power um, in every line, everything that she has written, and this willingness to be alive. And um, it's um, this poem, especially she wrote it when she was really 20. Yeah. And um, somehow it's a. Um, I don't know. It's um, it's so pure and uh, maybe also a little bit naive because she's so young and she wants so much. But still, she it's also wise as if um, it could be also been written by somebody who is seventeen. What, what, what is wise about it? I think she had uh, the, this. I, this, this feeling of what is what was going to be happen, and she would be disappointed by life, by circumstances, by everything would going to be happen to her. And um, yes, she. Um, 
which did it's happen. kind of yeah it would uh, also happened it's kind of a vision of a life before it started um yet and um it it is a poem by someone who's very young but on the other hand it's also it could be written by somebody who already lived a life so i um i was really impressed when i discovered it and I was also in my early 20s, and this poem follows me kind of through my life. There yeah. are often moments when I um, open the book, not only this one, but I uh, often turn back to her works when I'm, when I'm sad or when, I, when I'm looking for something special or I want to get in a special mood. So she's, uh, she, yeah, she remains really inspiring uh, for me. Because what is the... the effect of this this text on you when you read it it's it's uh, it's both it's tragic it's sad um, but it's also just like this um, she wants so much and I like I liked it about her so that she still till the end she committed suicide um, she stayed so I don't know what intense, but also yeah, she never, um, she um, she wanted so much from life, and she was kind of really honest to herself and to uh, people around her, and um, sometimes it's a little bit absurd because even in circumstances when she was not really in a position to back or wanting something, she still did. And I like this power about um, her. You mean she did so in real life, not in her texts or, or what? Uh, mm, I yes, I, I guess so. She also had written a lot of letters because she went into exile in the um, 1920s with her husband and then children and had a really, really hard life because she... They had to earn money. They were just like, yeah. She had, they had to flee from the Bolsheviks. And um, where did she flee to then? Different countries. She lived in uh, Prague. She lived also in Switzerland, in Germany, and in the end, she um, lived in France. And um, then her husband got into some trouble with, um, yeah, custody. And uh, then they had the offer to go back to the Soviet Union, but it was a really big mistake. It was a trap because he was um, arrested, also their daughter, and then sent to Gulag. He was murdered by yeah, Stalin regime. And uh, she had to flee with her son. He was just like 70 or 80. Um, because the world, Second World War started, okay. and she um, went, I think it's just like Kazakhstan or somewhere, and in the end, the last letter is she's begging for for a job as a dishwasher. And, um, in Kazakhstan and somewhere, yeah. yeah. And, but this, this one she wrote when she was 20? Yeah. So the, uh, in what period was it? That was before she was exiled with, the, with her yes, husband? Yes, it was, uh, it was uh, I think, 1913 or 1914. And um, she, she was uh, born in a family of this typical Russian intelligentsia. She spoke four or five languages. She um, was educated abroad, also in Switzerland, went there to school. And um, yes, was a little bit, also a little bit arrogant, I guess, and uh, fell in love with this white guard guy, with her husband, and had this romantic, a lot of this romantic um, stuff in her. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, and her life went completely other way and completely wrong, completely different as it w could be expected after this start. Yeah, like the start of this poem, also, it, I re I, wh what I see is someone who says it's, uh, I will, so many people have died already, and I will die too, and that's an, an amazing thought that she will die, uh, and that the world will go on turning, people will go on living, when she's no longer there. Do you recognize what I say now? Yes, yes, I know, yeah. But what, this is what I mean when I say it's, it's a poem by somebody who's so young yeah. and just realize this. Because when you're young, you don't think about dying or you, don't, you think it's just like it, it could last forever. You're in the middle of your life. Things, there are so many things. Um, it's just like a big, a huge promise 
uh, and um, you think you're going to achieve and get to all that and um, and then <laughs> year after year you realize okay maybe uh, not everything is just like going the way I imagined it and um, yes it's kind of striking and she she realizes okay she's going to die and um, asks for um, love and faith and yes. um, she asks for love, love and faith despite who she is she knows of herself that she's a bit too proud maybe a bit too arrogant uh, is that or that's what I read. Do you read? Is that Yes, right? you can, but I, I guess every poem is and every text is a kind of interpretation and this is what I like about it. So I think you can read it in a different way. So you can also read it just... For me, it's a kind of... She has a vision for a moment. She realized, okay, you know, it's this is a period... Things are um, changing. The First World War is going to start. In Russia, there are also some political uh, problems and things begin to change. So maybe you also can read it a little bit in this political context. And um, But I think it's more, yes, she, she knows that she wants too much. She wants uh, things that maybe she's not going to get. And she's uh, she's. Still, I, I don't read uh, fear when I read no. the lines. She's not afraid. She's still, okay, I'm here, I'm who I am, and I still ask for, for it. And even if I don't get, I want to ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I want uh, nothing less. Yeah. Okay, will, will you read it again for us in Russian now? <laughs> you, you can the text for in that ah, okay. Russian? <laughs> Is it difficult to do in, in Russian? I, I'm a little bit out of exercise because I didn't uh, read uh, Russian for well, many months. But I, I'll probably I'll most, try my most best. people will not notice, I think. Yes, yes, <laughs> I, I'll, I'll try my best. But it's really beautiful in Russian, so I am, um, yeah. Уж сколько их упало в эту бездну, разверсты вдали, настанет день, когда я исчезну с поверхности земли. Застанет все, что пело и боролось, сияло и рвалось. И зелень глаз моих, и нежный голос, и золото волос. И будет жизнь с ее насущным хлебом, и забывчивостью дня. И будет все, как будто бы под небом, и не было меня. Изменчивой, как дети в каждой мине, и так недолго злой. Любив, любивый час, когда дрова в камине становится золой. Верлен чел и кавалькады в чаще, и колокол в селе. Меня, такой живой и настоящий, на ласковой земле. К вам всем, что мне ни в чем не знавши меры, чужие и свои, я обращаюсь с требованием веры и с просьбой о любви. И день, и ночь, и письменно, и устно, за правду, да и нет. За то, что мне так часто слишком грустно и только 20 лет. За то, что мне прямая неизбежность прощения обид, за всю мою не безудержную нежность и слишком гордый вид. За быстроту стремительных событий, за правду, за игру. Послушайте, еще меня любите, за то, что я умру. Спасибо, спасибо,